Lab number three is entitled Diode Curve Tracer. In this lab, we're going to plot the voltage versus current characteristics of a variety of devices. We're going to do this on the oscilloscope. In the course, we've been looking at some basic elements like resistors and voltage sources and current sources. We usually describe them mathematically, like here V is equal to IR, but you can also show that graphically. If we use the y-axis as current and the x-axis as voltage, then we need to kind of rearrange this equation to look like that of a straight line. So I'm going to solve for i here as being 1 over r times v. So this is the form of a straight line that passes through the origin with a slope of 1 over r. We also looked at a short circuit in class, and this is really saying that the voltage is 0. The schematic for that is just a straight line. And what this implies is that the current i can be positive, negative, or 0, but this is what a graph of it would look like. An open circuit, the current is 0, and the voltage can take on any value. And of course, you can show that graphically this way. If we had a battery whose value was, say, 9 volts, then you'd have uh, the 9 volts here, but the current going into it could be positive, could be negative, could be 0. For example, if you went to a store and purchased a battery, just sitting on the shelf, the current through it is 0. Put it in a car and start the car, and current's going to come out of the battery to turn uh, the starter motor, and then the starter motor will turn into a generator and recharge the battery. So we've got all three conditions occurring for this one, a positive current for I, a negative current, and a zero value. For a DC current source, the current is constant, independent of the voltage across it. And this is what the graph of that would look like. So here's a positive value of current, but it can have a voltage that's positive, negative, or zero. We also looked at an ideal diode in the course. If you recall, its definition was that when the current flowing through it is positive, or zero, it looks like a short circuit, so it's got this same characteristic right here. But when current tries to flow the other direction, it can't, and it looks like an open circuit, and the resulting voltage across it is less than or equal to zero. Again, these are all plots of the voltage current characteristics of basic devices. We also looked at non-ideal diodes in the course, and they look similar to the ideal diode case, except that there's somewhat of an offset before the, the curve goes uh, shooting up. Usually we fill in the arrowhead the diode symbol when we refer to the real diode and then the ideal one being unfilled. So when you measure VD on, it's usually given at a specific value of current. And that's because there's a little bit of a slope here. Some typical values for a silicon diode, if you measured it at one milliamp, would be about six tenths of a volt. Now this is not exact. It would depend on the size of the diode. A red light emitting diode might be about 1.6 volts at one milliamp of current and a green LED about 1.8. In the course two, we've talked about operational amplifiers, or just op amps for short. And in chapter eight, we had this following statement. The current flowing into the input and output terminals of an op amp are always zero. If you have feedback in the amplifier, then the voltage across the input terminals is forced to take on a value of zero. With an op amp, you need to supply an operating voltage that's usually positive and negative, although there are some op amps that will run on a single supply only. But we need that for things to work. Sometimes we don't draw those connections, but in lab we have to make sure that they're there. If the current that flows into an op amp, if it's ideal, is zero, and we'll see later that's because it has a very high input resistance. If there's feedback around the op amp, then the voltage across these terminals has to shrink in value. And we'll later learn about a controlled source with very large gain. What that's saying is that this output voltage, if it's finite, and there's a voltage here that gets amplified, it has to be extremely small for this to be finite. In the ideal sense, it's driven to zero. Let's take a look at analyzing that circuit. This is called a zero volt, zero current principle. So here I've got a circuit with power, with feedback, and so I'm going to label no current because the resistance looking in here actually is very high. And the feedback will force this voltage to shrink. It won't actually be zero, but it'll be in millivolts or hundreds of microvolts. Compared to things that are in the five or 10 volt level, it appears to be zero. Now in this problem, even though everything is symbolic, we assume that we know the values of R1 and R2, and also the input. What's unknown here is the output, and I want to solve for it. Well, if you apply a voltage here, you'd expect some current to flow, and we could pick any direction we want. I'm just going to label this as I1, and I'll label the current in here as I2. Because there's no current here, the current that enters this node is I1, and what leaves the node is 0 and I2. So I1 must equal I2 in this circuit. If we go around this loop here, and the ground symbol just means a common connection. If you don't like the ground symbol, just connect all these things up. 
So the rise in voltage here would equal the drop across the resistor, which is I1, R1, plus the drop across the op amp. And that's just saying that the current I1 is V1 divided by R1. You can also go around this loop, and so the rise in voltage is zero, the drop is I2 times R2, and then the voltage here is V2. So I could solve for this equation, V2, and it would be the negative I2, R2. Okay, so I've got V2 in terms of I2, but I2 is the same as I1, and I1 is V1 over R1. So if you divide through by V1, you have a gain of minus R2 over R1. Let's take a look at a simple example. Suppose that I've got a 1K resistor for R1, a 10K for R2, and half a volt input. And my equation here says that the output is R2 over R1 times V1, and that's going to be minus 10 times a half, or minus 5 volts. Okay, so how are we getting more voltage out than we're putting in? Well, those power supplies are what we're getting it from. So I need batteries to operate this thing, just like anything that you're listening to with audio, you have to have a, a power supply or a battery pack. And basically these relationships of op amps are true as long as the output voltage is between the two power supplies. In our case here, we're going to use a plus and minus 15 volt power supply. So as long as the output's between those two, it looks just pretty much like an ideal op amp. In the past labs, we saw that the oscilloscope can plot voltage versus time, but it can also plot voltage versus voltage. What I need to do is find some way to convert the current through the element I want to graph into a voltage. We can actually use this last circuit, in a sense, to do that. So here's my inverting amplifier, and the voltage across here is zero if I have feedback around it. So if I were to put the diode here in series with it, then this node voltage to ground, in other words, this drop plus this drop, is just the voltage across the diode. So if I put the oscilloscope probe here and make this my x-axis, I can then plot the voltage across the diode and the op amp, which is approximately the diode's voltage. And the current that's coming in the diode is coming through here and eventually goes up into here. And that creates a voltage V3 whose value is something we can solve for. So if I go around the loop here, I've got zero rise in voltage, I sub D times 1K plus V3. So V3 is related to the current in the diode times a minus 1,000. But we want to plot not the negative of the current, but the actual value of the current. So let's just change the sign of this answer. One simple way is to take another inverting amplifier and just pick two equal resistors. Any values would really work. For practical purposes, as long as we keep the resistors roughly a, above 100 ohms and below a couple million ohms, these op amps look fairly ideal. So now my output voltage here is just simply going to be the negative of V3, and this is going to be equal to I sub D times 1K. So now I've got a voltage that's proportional to the current that's flowing through the diode. So for a 1 volt output, we're looking at a 1 milliamp change in current. So the purpose of this lab is to make an instrument that can plot the voltage and current characteristics of devices. We're going to be interested in looking at some types of diodes, actually, in lab. And the concepts that we just covered are properties of ideal op amps, the inverting amplifier, the VI characteristics of a specific type of diode, including LEDs, and then we looked at a little bit of the designing of a curve tracer. The techniques we're going to learn when we do this lab is the dual trace feature of the scope, the XY plotting feature. We're also going to learn how to lay out a fairly complicated circuit on a protoboard, and we're going to use the times 10 probes for measurement. So again, I'd like you to read over this lab, so there'll be a quiz next time you come to lab on this video, but also having you read the experiment. And this is lab number three, diode curve tracer.